Well, for more on the fallout, I spoke with Chris Bovis, a business law professor at the University of Hull Business School, to get more insight into what the future EU might look like. I began by asking him about Scotland and whether we might now expect to see another independence referendum there. Scotland uh, voted overwhelmingly to remain within the European Union. And as a matter of fact, they have started already uh, negotiations. They made contact with the European Commission and the European Parliament to uh, affect that decision. Uh, most, most probably, we would like to see um, some clarity on the part of uh, the future months and how the United Kingdom government will treat uh, the entire kingdom, the entire uh, regions of the United Kingdom vis-à-vis -vis the uh, European uh, referendum results. But uh, it's likely, highly likely, that we'll see another referendum for independence from Scotland. And do you think it's too early at this time to the, the, the United Kingdom? Do you think, in terms of the economic impact, that basically the whole region should be worried? Uh, indeed. Uh, we've seen also the uh, Northern Ireland, the region of Northern Ireland, to also voice concerns about the possibility of uh, remaining within the European Union. So we have the potential, the United Kingdom, to be a kingdom but not very united. See the separation of the United Kingdom into different parts. Now, in fact, geographically, that's one thing. But what about the economic impact of having these countries then perhaps separated? Extremely difficult to predict. Plus, tremendous links, uh, economic links, with the United Kingdom, but also has a, a very close links with other parts of the European Union also other parts of the world, including the United States and also Canada. So it's uh, also the possibility to have uh, an economic problem in our hands in terms of uh, where the new independent Scotland, which will remain within the European Union, will go economically. It could be better off within the European Union, or it will be better off staying within the United Kingdom and remain outside the European Union. Now, obviously, outside of the United Kingdom, we also saw that global markets were rattled immediately following the vote, and we are now seeing them starting to settle down. What are your expectations in terms of the volatility? How long do you think we can expect this to continue? We expect volatility. The credit rating agencies have reduced the uh, highly, uh, highly credible uh, rate of the triple A of the United Kingdom, and they've foreseen some uh, troubles ahead. Uh, the government, the prime minister, mentioned that uh, the markets will react uh, highly volatile, and we will see some elements of volatility in respect of uh, the currency. Uh, the governor of the Bank of England uh, made uh, also available uh, 250 billion sterling pounds to financial sector undertakings in order to prevent any issue concerning um, uh, liquidity. Now, one thing that also contributes a lot to the UK um, economy is tourism, obviously. Now, with this all happening, do you expect there to be a big change in tourism? Do you think people will perhaps be rushing to the UK or perhaps to other countries in the European Union if they're not sure what's going to happen in the next few years with what's happening? The key feature here is uh, look at the parity between sterling and the dollar or other uh, currencies. Look at also the parity between sterling and euro and other currencies. At the moment, it's a good bargain. Uh, please come and visit the United Kingdom because uh, we need the visitors. But also, uh, the Europeans also pro provide some very good uh, destinations. The key issue is uh, the uh, parity of the currency. Now, one thing that's obviously worrying a lot of people who do business, especially in England, is what's going to happen with trade. What are your expectations in terms of perhaps the companies who may decide to pick up a move out of London because of the uncertainty there? I expect some companies to migrate. I expect some companies in the financial sector to migrate to different sectors, to different centers. For example, we'll see American conglomerates moving from London to Paris. Uh, also, we'll see also uh, some banks moving their uh, facilities to other European states, to other European capitals, in order to be closer to Frankfurt. We'll see also competition between different parts of the sectors, the financial sectors uh, within the European Union and London. Uh, in the long run, I will see also some problems in relation to manufacturing. Uh, 
Manufacturing within the European Union is based on a very thin margin. So every increase in aspects that relate to export duties, any aspects that relate to taxes, they will impact on the balance of these manufacturing companies. They will create less and less profit for the shareholder. And that is a serious concern for even migrating an assembly line to different parts of the European Union or overseas.